So everybody, iPadOS 18.1 Beta 3 has released to all developers to test out, try out, to see if there's any new features, as well as any bug improvements or performance enhancements along the way. So without further ado, let's see exactly what Apple has added because we have a couple new features finally. Let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And first and foremost, we did take a screenshot on how big this build number was. And this update was about 1.1 gigs in terms of total storage. So make sure you have at least 2.5 to maybe even three gigs of internal storage available to make sure that this installs and installs correctly. And then when it comes to the build number, if we go into the about section, go to iPadOS version, we are on iPadOS 18.1 and then we're on 22B534E which means we are getting closer and closer to the final release candidate and then eventually the public release. As of right now, we're only in the developer beta. This is beta three with the public beta soon to be coming following over the next couple days. And one thing to keep in mind that I keep reiterating in these videos is that 18.1 will not be available when the new iPhones release during the glow time event. 18.1 will most likely be available towards the end of October, and let's see how Apple ends up releasing this from a scheduling standpoint. And then another piece to note is that 18.1 is only available on those devices that will support Apple Intelligence, so the 15 Pro and Pro Max are the only ones able to install 18.1, at least for right now, and same thing goes with the iPad. I'm rocking an M4 iPad Pro, but you need an M-powered iPad in order to get into the beta program for 18.1. 18.1 will release to more devices after the fact, but for right now in the beta program, it is only on Apple Intelligence supported devices. And now before we get into the what's new, I do actually want to start off with the battery life because battery life with beta 2 was extremely impressive on the iPad front. On the iPhone front, Jeff is going to let you guys know exactly how that battery life went. But on the iPad front, if you go over the last 10 days, we see some of these usage days, which are pretty high. We're getting five hours and 33 minutes of intense screen on time, which is great to see. We have a day here, which is four hours and 41 minutes with only about 60% battery being used up, which means we're easily going to get around eight hours of battery life. And again, I'm using my iPad for those intensive tasks. Now, if you're sitting here just on Safari, scrolling through the internet, maybe going on Netflix and YouTube, this thing will easily get you 10 to 12 hours of battery life, no problem whatsoever. So I do think that the battery life on the M4 iPad Pro with 18.1 has been extremely efficient, which is something that I could not say with the previous iterations of iPad OS and the older maybe M1 and M2 iPad Pros. And now when it comes to what's new, we got two big new features. The first one being the new notification summary. So if you go into your settings and then go into your notifications down here, you now have the summarized previews option here. Now before, for the summarized previews with 18.1, we were able to get we were able to get summarizations in some applications. So in the messages app, in the mail app, we were able to get some summaries in the actual lock screen itself. And I'll put some screenshots of what I mean exactly right here. But now this is being opened up to more applications in every single third party application that's in here. So if you have this checked off, that means that notifications will start to be summarized, especially if there are multiple notifications from one application, or if that notification ends up being longer than two lines, it'll try to summarize it for you into one concise line. So you get the gist of exactly what that notification will entail. So if I pull down on my notifications, you can see that Redfin, which is the real estate application, has 71 notifications, but it's summarizing it. And you know it's summarized when you get that little moniker right there, which is that little kind of curved arrow with those lines right there and it just says here price drops and loots pending in Princeton which means that most of these notifications have to do with that location as well as the other location if I tap on here then you get the actual notifications in all 71 of them so like as I mentioned third-party applications will now give you this moving forward if you have that turned on which I absolutely love and I think summarization in the notifications has been one of my favorite features thus far and now the next feature that I want to bring up is in the Photos application, and it's something that Apple showed off at WWDC, and with this Beta 3 iteration, we're finally getting that new Cleanup feature. So Cleanup is going to be very similar to that Magic Eraser feature that we see on Google Pixels, and essentially you click on any photo that you see right here, you press a little edit button on the bottom of it, and then you have this new Cleanup feature down here, or this new Cleanup button. You tap on that Cleanup button, you got to give it a second, and then you can see that it starts to highlight things that it thinks you will be able to actually remove. Now you can actually just tap it right here, to remove the dog completely, or if you wanna actually customize what you wanna remove, you can grab your Apple Pencil, or you can even actually use your finger. You can actually circle this right here and it'll try to delete that completely. And as you can see, it kind of did a decent job. Again, this is a big portion of the actual image itself. So if I tap on that, you can see that it is sort of not doing it exactly, but it's kind of giving you the essence of it. But if you just tap on the sections that were predetermined, you can see that it does get removed. 
Now some pictures work better than others, this isn't a perfect example, but if I press cancel we'll discard those changes, let's pick a different photo. So here we have another photo, this is actually a thumbnail that I was working on, we're going to press a little cleanup feature, we're going to let it highlight some things that maybe it would want to highlight itself, it looks like nothing is predetermined, but if I want to actually move this microphone right here, let's see what it does, it actually finds the entire microphone, is able to remove it, and now of course if you zoom in this isn't going to be a perfect indication of what's behind it, but for most people since this isn't the subject of the photo, I think it's good enough. But now I'm curious to see in real time if I try to remove the actual logo of the hat but keep the hat, let's see what happens. As you can see I'm circling it and it's going to actually try to remove the entire hat which is kind of funny. If I want to remove this Apple Watch right here, will it remove the Apple Watch? It does the Apple Watch pretty decently. If I try to remove the entire iPad, let's see what happens. As you can see, it removes the iPad, but it is a little bit broken. It works a lot better with, like I said, things that are a little bit out of focus. So if I try to remove this, that works perfectly. That Nobody would actually ever notice that. So depending on what you're trying to do, it'll actually show it off. And then, of course, if you want to see what it looked like before, before saving it, you just tap on that button and you can go back and forth between them. As you can see, it does look a little bit funny. But now this feature is available on iOS 18.1 and iPadOS 18.1 Beta 3. One final piece I do want to check out is if you do have screenshots, for instance, if I try to grab this, I want to see if this eraser or this new cleanup feature can actually just get rid of things altogether. So if I want to get rid of this section right here, let's see what it actually ends up doing. As you can see, it does remove it and it turns everything into kind of like gibberish. But if I just remove this right here, let's see what it does. It does change it to a completely different language. So if you want to maybe censor something that you're kind of sending off or doing something like that when it comes to sending screenshots, the cleanup tool could be effective in terms of just censoring certain sections. So if I censor that part right there, there, it'll actually completely change it so it's not legible to anybody else, which is cool to see. And then finally, in terms of performance, we've only had this for about an hour, but it seems very fluid. Battery life will be a good indicator moving forward. We'll have an update video of that later on. But in terms of what else is new, unfortunately, there's still some things missing, like not having the magic wand with the Apple Pencil. There's still some other Apple intelligence features. For instance, in the mail application, there is no nice categorized mail, although you do have the priority here, which does give you some summaries of what's going on. But for the most part, there still isn't that nice breakdown of the new mail application, which is something that we are missing, which I hope we do get fixed or at least get added on relatively soon. But outside of that, things seem to be working well. In terms of the actual home screen itself, if we customize it, there isn't anything new here. Everything has remained the same. But overall, I am happy with this new update. Hopefully Apple just gives us a little bit more as time goes on, and maybe we'll get a beta 4 before that actual final glow time event, which we'll have on September 9th. But let's finish up this video, everybody. Now that was just about do it for this video everybody, like you saw there weren't too many differences between beta 2 and beta 3, but we did finally get some additional AI features built in there which I love to see because again, the Apple intelligence features that we've been getting with 18.1 holistically, seems like Apple's rolling it out very slowly and not giving us everything all at once. So this time around we got the new cleanup feature, as well as getting those notification summaries now alongside all the different applications and not just the messaging app and the mail app. But like I said, that'll do it everybody, if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end and let me know have you guys tried out 18.1 have you installed it on your devices are you on the new beta 3 what do you think so far what do you think of the new Siri and Apple intelligence I'm just excited to see what Apple unveils at their glow time event and kind of give us some more use cases and maybe some more promises as to when we're going to be getting 18.1 down the line but that'll do it everybody if you want to watch more videos like this one click on one of these right here and until next time I'm Fernando and I'm out of here everybody peace